Hey there everyone, Witch Hazel here again. Thanks for joining me. I had one more topic I wanted to chat about tonight, and that is an item that I created for my ancestor altar, and it is my ancestor spirit bottle. So what is that, a spirit bottle? Lots of information about spirit bottles around, but it, form, it performs basically two different functions. A spirit bottle can be basically your mode of communication with your spirits, as well as a resting place for those spirits when they join you in this realm. So mine still needs a little bit of additional work, but here it is. And I love this bottle and I need to cover up the cap because it will tell you that this is an old um, chutney bottle. I think it's Major Gray's Mango Chutney. I love that stuff, but I love these bottles as well. So you can see it's almost all filled. There's space still at the top and there's a reason for that. There's another ingredient I'm still missing that I wanted to include in my bottle, but have not been able to find. So. I'll go over a little bit of what's in my bottle, but first, just to reiterate, this becomes then my place for the spirits to rest, as well as my mode of communicating with them. The herbs I include in the bottle are all chosen for specific properties that they have that will aid hopefully aid in communion with the loved ones that you want to have around you. I want to make a note while we're talking about that on verbiage and this idea of a place for the spirit to stay. I mentioned in another video that I found very little information about ancestor worship and spirits working with the spirits outside of hoodoo, voodoo, santeria. And those beliefs are somewhat different from mine. They do mesh very well with my own beliefs, but some of the verbiage doesn't work for me because it sounds as though, for one thing, you're forcing the spirits to come to you. Now, I'm not going to say this as a general statement, this is just from a couple of places that I read about spirit bottles. I got this impression that you're conjuring the spirits, you're calling them to you, you're basically forcing them to come and speak with you whether they want to or not. I don't believe in that. I believe that spirit is spirit, it's all around us, and if my loved ones, my ancestors want to come and say hi, I want to be able to offer them a spot and welcome them in my home. So that is my purpose with this bottle. The other thing that I read, and I think it was in conjunction with using crystal, crystal skulls or what have you, uh, or boxes as the place for the spirits to be when you're calling them, that again sounded to me like you're imprisoning them in this space, which is also not what I intend with this bottle. I'm not forcing any of my ancestors to come and say hi, and I'm certainly not going to keep them here against their will. So those are just a couple of clarification points that I wanted to make that I believe whatever method of communing with the spirits you use, if it's effective, great. And here's my dog again, wanting to sit in my lap. Uh, but my own personal belief is that the spirits will be here if they want to be and not if they don't want to be. I am just providing a space should they choose to want to be here. Alright, so now on to the good stuff. What is in my spirit bottle? Well, to start out with, here this bottom layer. This I picked up on a recent visit to my to the graves of my maternal grandparents because I, I 
mentioned this in another video, I won't go into great detail, but basically I've been cut off, myself and the rest of my family have been cut off from any earthly remembrance of my grandfather. Because of that, I went to my grandparents' graves and I took some of the dirt from their graves. Again, they're out in California, I'm in Colorado, I wanted that piece of connection to them. So I have dirt from my grandparents' graves. The next thing here, this white portion here, is cuscaria powder. This is, and for any of you that use cuscaria, it's a wonderful thing, I love it. Uh, it's made from eggshells, it's powdered eggshells. And the eggshells that I have used, aside from regular eggshells, I used the ones from my I've just blanked on the holiday name, Ostara, my Ostara tree. So basically around Easter time, my family has a tradition of making, of putting pussy willow branches into a vase and then hanging colored blown eggs from the branches. So those eggs I took and powdered and I used that in my bottle. The reason for this powder is protection. What are you protecting against? It's up for debate. In my case, I don't necessarily feel I need protection from the spirits because I'm not calling them here against their will and I'm not inviting in spirits that are unknown to me. However, this can act as protection either for yourself or and or protection for the spirits. I don't see any reason to leave them out of the protection for whatever reason. This is no longer the plane that they belong in. So there may be forces at work that are not good for them. So protection is always a good thing to have. The next layer here is rosemary. Rosemary is an herb used to, to aid in communion with the dead, aid in communicating with the spirits. On top of that, and it's not a very big layer, but on top of that I have lavender. Lavender is for remembrance, so I added it in. And then, additionally on top of that, I have bay leaves, crushed bay leaves. And again, the bay leaves are traditionally used to help in communication with departed spirits. So all in all, my bottle as it stands is to help me remember those I love, and to help me stay in connection with them. If they are available to give me their insight and their wisdom still from the plane that they are now in, then I am very happily offering that they do that for me. The last portion of the bottle that is still empty, I am hoping to get you bark to put in there. I got this idea in my head that I wanted yew bark because it, yew is a tree traditionally planted on in cemeteries, on graves. So it has a very strong connection to the dead. And there is a local shop, a metaphysical shop, that has yew bark, at least in theory. They have it listed as one of the herbs that they carry. They carry a very big supply of herbs. However, for at least the last month, they have been out of stock and no one seems to be able to tell me when they will be back in stock for you bark other than that i have not been able to find any other supplier for you bark partially because when i try to look it up a lot of information comes up about experimental uses of you in cancer treatment so i'm not finding the actual bark itself for sale. And part of this, I'm sure, is because of the concerns of use of it for cancer treatment without proper, what do you call that, uh, medical supervision, put it that way. So if anyone knows where I can find you bark, that would be wonderful. If not, then I'm going to have to rethink my bottle and think of what else. I might just put a couple more layers of the rest, lavender, rosemary, and bay leaves. I could put a couple more layers in there. But I would really prefer to have you, if anyone knows where I could find it. So,
just a short little blip about my spirit bottle, why I have it, what I put into it, and in my upcoming video, which I plan on titling Incensed About Incense, I'm going to tell you about the making of my Winter Nights incense, which I purposely made to include all of the ingredients from my spirit bottle. So that has a definite connection for me in the holiday and my ancestor altar. I made a couple of tweaks to it, but I'll go over that in that video. So I hope this one was interesting to you. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks very much for joining me. Bye.